Well, my grandpa moved from south of China. He's Tatu. He speak Tatu, but he's not speak like Mandarin. Um, so for today, I'm going to share you about the um, um, Chinatown in Bangkok. There are many things to see in Chinatown, but uh, normally P Thai people will know that exactly when you come to Chinatown in the morning, uh, first thing that you have to think of is to buying a goal, like a goal like this. So uh, we have to understand the same thing first. Let me share my, uh, my screen. Okay. Uh, Chinatown in Bangkok. Um, actually, the Chinese people, they are living in uh, the Grand Palace before. It, you know, some of you might come to Bangkok before, right? Uh, Chinese people moved to Chinatown since 1782, after the king moved to the third generation. So, and one of the business that really popular until nowadays is to selling a goal. So when we talking about the goal in Thailand, so for the event today, uh, I like you to understand the same thing. When we talking about goal in Thailand, we selling goal like our currency. Our currency is called BAT, B-A-T-H. It's like a coin. So one BAT goal is equal 15.22 gram. So, and we gonna talk about this, you know, um, for, the, for the 10 minutes. And also, but for the purity of the gold in Thailand, if you buy the jewelry, that should be like 96.5 gram or like 22 carat. So we quite like a pure gold. So normally Thai people, uh, we buying a gold for like many reasons. First to buy as an investment. Sometimes we buy it for the gift. Sometimes we give it for the, the wedding and or like for the newborn baby. And there are many hidden stories, you know, in Chinatown in Bangkok, if you come to uh, Bangkok. So if you have a chance, you know, like I have this tour in person as well. So for today, I will show you the oldest go shop in Chinatown. Actually, this is was built over um, 160 years old and running by the fifth generation who live in Chinatown. And as you can see the <clears throat> old building right here, but the building itself uh, was built in 1920 uh, by the second generation. The reason that they built this building because at that time the king gave them an honor to, give, to, to put the Garuda, this is kind of the royal emblem to the top of the building. Uh, back then, this building used to be the tallest building in, in Chinatown area. And it is quite, you know, busy street. And this building, um, designed by the architecture from uh, Holland, but inside, they designed by the uh, Chinese architecture. And as you can see, you know, in front of this shop, um, this go shop, they has only one entrance. And I am pretty sure, you know, like in Chinatown, every single Chinatown around the world, the land is quite expensive, but this shop is really special. Uh, they let the small shop, like store shop, you know, the a little store that you can see on the um, on the video, let let these kind of people selling things in front of their shop for free. They don't get a rental because those kind of people, they protect the gold shop from the thief, if they have like the thief come to this go shop, so those kind of people will help, you know, help the go shop to, you know, to catch them. And also this go shop, um, you know, nowadays this go shop, they have to pay a rental to the, to the king because this is a crowd property. You know, one month they should pay about 6,000 US dollars per month. This is quite special because it's an old building. And okay, as you can see, you know, um, it's quite quite tall. And also, before we go a little bit further, um, I like to uh, actually I have a question for everybody. Okay, hold on one second. Oh, this is oh, okay. Back to like this is the on the top of this building. 
uh, it's only one building in Chinatown that we can see the whole view like this. And before we go a little bit further, uh, is anyone like to make a guess what kind of career is this? So should people type their answer in the chat box? Okay, like this is like related to the go shop, I would say that. Okay, so for people who are curious, want to take a shot, you can type your guess in our chat box. Uh, what, what's this guy's profession? Gold panner or carrier farmer. Um, okay, people are coming up with very different answers, boy. Okay. Gold waiter. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's an answer. What is this guy doing back then? So like this guy actually he's empty the you know he's empty the toilet. So, but the, good, um, the thing is, he has to pay to the go shop to empty the toilet because only this shop, this go shop, they have the go smith to working on, you know, on the go. Back then, it's over like 50 people working on the go when they go to the restroom, when they go to cleaning their stuff. So, there is might be like some piece of the go left, you know. <clears throat> so, that's why this guy have to pay, you know, for the go shop. They have to do the auction and there is another place here is where they dump the, the, the pool after they you know looking for the gold and this is when you come to bangkok before this is like a like a landmark of the chinatown area so everybody have to pass this one so but in chinese i mean like my language like um that you so we call this one gong silong it's mean toilet it's like, I'm not sure it's like, um, like similar to other Chinese language. So, and at, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, like this go shop, they was built since 1920. And on the seventh floor, they has a, a hidden, actually they has a private museum, you know, on the, on the seventh floor. Um, this go shop been, been closed during the Second World War and it was left, you know, for over 40 years. But after the fourth generation, you know, they come back and then they have seen that there's a lot of, you know, instrument that making, uh, that made by the goldsmith. So he decided to open the seventh floor as a private museum, you know. So today I will show you, you know, on the, you know, on the top floor and also they may have the air rooms. Uh, which is they allow me to, you know, to film, you know, some of the video to show you today as well. So, but we have to climb up to the seventh floor, you know, to, to see their stuff. It's quite, quite deep. <laughs> so if you go to this shop, you don't have to, you know, go to gym. <laughs> this is a safe, uh, this is a fourth floor. This uh, private museum that they have. So normally they um, keep the uh, the instrument that made by hand uh, from the goldsmith. So back then there are like over uh, thirty people, you know, sitting in this room to working on the gold. And you can see on the top here, it's a it's a Garuda that put on the top of the building, you know, back to nineteen twenty. This is a great honor, you know, from, from the king. This is sign name of this go shop. It's called Tang Tokang, and this is a pump. So it's a design of the, you know, when you want to pump on the go. And this is a, um, the old school scale. It's made out of the ivory. So we put uh, one baht koi on the other side and we put another you know, go on the other side. <clears throat> and so for the next video, I will show you how to make a go chain by hand. So nowadays we still, you know, can see how to make a go chain. Only this shop, you know, in Thailand, I'm currently, and also they only have the 
uh, one of the co-smith that working on the co. And they get a co and then they burn a co first and then after that they make a co bar. And this is an instrument that they're still using, you know. And this uh, another instrument, when you want to make a go uh, to the smaller dimension, they will put a go in there. And yeah, it's how to how to make a go chain after you get a go, right? You have to beat a go to the smaller diameters and then put the go into it this um, instrument to make a core smaller. <clears throat> After that, you have to burn a core, um, make a core become softer and put into the, the acid uh, water. then you can spread out the gold to the different size that you want. So after that, you get a gold chain. You can make the necklace to you know, different design. So you have to like uh, roll the um, roll the gold chain into the loop and then cut the loop, you know, like one by one and then connect the loop. So like this guy is only one um, goldsmith that was left until nowadays. So it's quite you know labor intensive. So after that, he has to put loop, connect to the other loop. After they put, you know, one loop to the other loop. So you then they have to put a glue, which is on the bowl, you know. Uh, right next to the gold, you can, you will see it later. Um, for the uh, <clears throat> glue, it's um, the purity of the gold is ninety four point five. Yeah, and you can see on the on the bowl, the little bowl here. So as I mentioned earlier, you know the purity of the gold in Thailand is about nine ninety six point five, but for the uh, for the glue, it's about 94.5. This is how different 2% that the goldsmith can make money because this guy, he doesn't have any salary. So, but um, right now it's not really famous for Thai people to buying a jewelry and then uh, as an investment. So, so a lot of people, they're buying a gold chain. So this guy cannot making a lot of money as before. And this is the, uh, the air rooms you know, on the fourth floor. So most of the item here is over 100 years old. So you can see uh, the, uh, uh, on my mouse here, yeah, this is the first generation he come from China. Um, so actually his name is Tokang. His last name is Se Tang. So that's why this go shop is called Tang Tokang. They, they uh, keep a lot of items, which is a, um, you know, we cannot find nowadays anymore. Like this one, it's a uh, ivory. So it's quite, you know, it's quite difficult to get this one and, and get the license from the government because right now it's illegal, but this one is already legal, you know.
and also like in this room they get um they keep a lot of item that they get from china as well like a uh, uh abacus and also like the instrument for the opium this is made out of the jade and this is a this like a uh, chinese design you know on the first floor so um they're selling coal like this when you come to uh this shop it's quite you know normal that you can see like this one and when you come to bangkok it's quite common you can see the sign like this this is every single go shop in chinatown they sell in the same price but for the labor cost it's quite a little bit different so the chinatown road in bangkok just 1.5 kilometers long but we have 138 go shop you know in this area so so you don't have to worry if you buy a go in chinatown in bangkok they never rip you off this is uh, i have a chance to take a photo with one kilograms of the gold. Uh, I think nowadays like 1.7 million. I think you can buy like one one car, you know. And this guy, he is a uh, fifth generation who running business right now. So somehow, boy, I think you need to optimize your the sound. Oh, okay. We couldn't hear. Okay, sorry. It's okay. Uh, okay, let me see. Uh, our shop is uh, reopened for about 160 years already. Yes. And, and the fifth generation. Uh, welcome to our shop. So, uh, actually, this is like, you know, the story about. Oh, sorry. This is a story about, you know, like Chinatown in Bangkok, just uh, some part of them. Uh, so uh, for the whole, you know, Chinatown story should be like take one hour, you know. So yes. we need more time to, um, you know, to to introduce you to Chinatown in Bangkok. So is there anyone has a question about Chinatown in Bangkok? Oh, uh, thank you, boy. If people are interested, I recommend you can take boys Airbnb online experience for in a one hour experience to explore Bangkok's Chinatown. Gold is a very important element of Chinese culture. It's, it so, was and is a measure of wealth. So uh, actually, I'm sorry, uh, actually like this one, I haven't put to uh, online experience on Airbnb, but actually I put it on Zoom because it's take time, you know, for Airbnb to launch or to live uh, my online experience. So Zoom is more, you know, easy for me. So if you like to um, to see this, you can apply, you know, I have another two weeks to do it for free. Great. Thank you very much, boy. Um, I am amazed that you were able to make so many videos firsthand, <laughs> the traditional technique, the craft of goldsmith. It's incredible. I am now going to introduce Vincent and I am going to put Vincent in the spotlight. Hi, Vincent, would you like to introduce yourself? Okay, so everyone can hear me all right? So yes. I just unmute myself. Yeah, okay. So um, my name is Vincent and I call myself an entrepreneur uh, um, and I'm now in China, but I do uh, work in Canada and South Korea before. Um, so now my startup is about uh, host events that only popular in uh, foreign countries. Like in China, we do not have potluck. If anyone heard of it, like everybody brings something yeah. into home, right? So in China, we, do, we don't have it. So my job, my company's job is to bring these kind of events hosted in China so that people that uh, who actually fancy a uh, foreign or international lifestyle can enjoy international lifestyle uh, in this uh, particular time period because they cannot go outside of the world since the pandemic. So we organize this. This is what we're doing. So as you can find that I'm a culture lover myself. And um, 
Uh, I know usually when I'm talking, people have a tons of questions because I said a lot of weird things. So um, I do welcome you interact with me uh, just by typing messages or questions, like whatever that, um, that you think is uh, interesting or curious, just type in. And I probably check the uh, chat all the time. So uh, I will reply all the time. All right. So happy new year, first of all. Um, and um, so today I'm gonna talk about WeChat, if you guys heard of it. Because if you want to do anything, literally anything in China, you cannot go without WeChat now. It's that important. Uh, so anybody here has ever heard of WeChat? You can type one in the uh, chat, in, in, the, in the message. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, so many people. Okay, yeah, one, okay, four. Four of you guys heard of it. All right. Oh, okay. six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's oh, coming. Yeah. All right. Okay. Everybody knows right. WeChat. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, WeChat, um, it it works. Probably people. Um, yeah. WhatsApp. You're right. Probably the first impression of people heard of WeChat is that they think it's on WhatsApp, but it's actually much, much more than that. Because the WeChat is what is WhatsApp plus Facebook plus Instagram plus PayPal in China. It's a giant like that. And they want to replace TikTok and Taobao soon. But I think that's going to take a longer time. But now they are the four, the combination of these four, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and PayPal. So that's WeChat. So how many users, users do they have? They must have a, tons of users, right? So uh, from last um, statistics uh, the report, Tencent, uh, Tencent is the company of WeChat. They released, they have 1. billion users all over the world. Still less than Facebook, but it's huge considering WeChat is major used by um, Chinese people, not by people all around the world. Because Facebook has 2.8 billion users all over the world. But most of the Facebook users are like everyone in the world. But WeChat, mostly only Chinese use that. Okay, so speaking of WeChat, we can talk about something that's really interesting, that before WeChat become the Chinese version of PayPal, um, you know, in China, there's a giant uh, in payment or uh, e -co electronic commerce, right? So Jack Ma, I think everybody heard of it, right? So Jack Ma has Alibaba and Alibaba is do very good in uh, e-commerce. So they have Alipay. Alipay, before WeChat Pay was introduced to the Chinese market, uh, Alipay is dominating, like literally dominating. 95% of the market is dominated by Alipay as a payment method in uh, cell phone. But how WeChat Pay become another, dom another big player? Because now they are 50-50, Alipay and WeChat. Now they're 50-50. Why is that? And that, here's the story. It's all because of Chinese New Year today, because of Chinese New Year. Why? Let's see the first photo that uh, the Chinese New Year have, because we have this, I think, uh, yeah. Anybody can see my screen, right? Yeah, we can see your screen. Okay, so we have this culture as the red package in Chinese, literally translated, Hong Bao, whatever, red package. So. We don't send money as gift. We don't send a gift card as gift. We put money into a red, red envelope and send it as a gift in Chinese New Year. And this history comes back to around 100 years ago. Uh, how it's um, formed, I don't know about it, but it, it's about that, at about that time, uh, the Chinese people developed this kind of habit or culture. So, um, WeChat uh, released a new feature that in Chinese New Year, they allowed friends, because WeChat used to be a WhatsApp, right? So it's just friends talking to friends, it's I am. So they allowed friends to send not money to each other, but red envelope. I'm gonna show you how it is, red envelope, like this. Yes. This one. So when you are talking to your friend, they develop a digital red envelope because the Chinese people has this culture. So 
we don't send money as gift. We send red envelope. So people will think this is a, um, a, a greetings uh, from New Year. So people are really willing uh, to send people, send their friends or families using this. So WeChat dominated this uh, payment market only after this feature has been released. So they managed to, the number is that they managed to, to get 8 billion, sorry, 8 million users in seven days, only after releasing this. 8 million people entered their bank account in WeChat only after the red envelope feature has been released. So that's a little bit of history about that, right? Anybody has any questions? Just uh, uh, replying, I mean, uh, write messages to me, test me. Uh -huh. Then, okay. So, uh, so back to WeChat. Um, thanks to that, three things, three things has totally disappeared. Totally, okay, eight million is not a lot, I agree. It's in seven days. I'm just saying it's only in seven days. Okay, so um, three things has totally disappeared in Chinese culture. One is that uh, the phone number, when you're asking, when you meet new people in some social events or some business meetings, um, usually in, in Western culture, we meet some new people in a bar, right? When I have a number or do you have a name card, right? But nowadays, uh, it doesn't exist anymore. It's just, can I have your WeChat? Because we do not, Chinese people nowadays, they, we don't ask for phone number anymore. Nobody calls anybody. Nobody don't send SMS, a short message to anybody. It's just um, uh, WeChat uh, QR code. I will ask you for a WeChat QR code. It's not like WhatsApp, uh, they will ask you for a phone number, then you add it as a contact, then you can connect with you. But um, in China, it's only WeChat. So phone number, asking new people for phone number doesn't exist anymore, this culture. And second of all, thanks to WeChat, uh, I know everybody enters into this room because of EDM, uh, the uh, email, right? Uh, email direct marketing. Uh, but now in China, uh, if you're an entrepreneur, email uh, for marketing and email for work has totally disappeared. I'm just saying this is, I know it's hard, hard it's, to imagine that, but nowadays in China, even if when people are in work, they don't use WeChat, they don't use email at all. It's not like CCU, BCCU, only if, only if they are working with a multi uh, international company, like I'm sorry, multinational and multi-international is not a word, uh, multi-nation <laughs> company. Because if the Chinese uh, office uh, needs to work with some foreign office, they need to use email because uh, you guys use emails. But uh, in, within China, everyone just, if they want to work, let's create a WeChat group. Let's talk in WeChat. Let's add this person's WeChat and you call him or call her just like that. It's much, much easier than, or most likely, uh, most important, it's much, much more efficient than email. Because WeChat, you can bug him all the time. You can see the message, people can see the message. <laughs> Yeah, you can bug him all the time. So it's much, much efficient than uh, using email. So that one is totally disappeared. And second of all, cash. Cash totally disappeared. Uh, I know how hard it is to imagine, but uh, it's been two years now. I don't carry um, for more than 10 RMB. 10 RMB and it's like one pound. One pound. Yeah, like one pound, right? Okay. So I don't have more than one pound in my pocket cash and go out onto the street for two years already. So some days, some day before, I just witnessed some people. Witnessed some people, um, they, I think they came from USA. So they just got their currency exchanged. They don't have a WeChat account, right? So what they're doing is that they pay in RMB and the person who in a, in a restaurant, the person who received the cash, she's totally lost it. What am I gonna do? How am I gonna receive your cash? I cannot receive a cash. If I receive a cash, I don't have any change because usually normal people don't pay in cash. So this is exactly what is happening now in China. I will show you a picture. This is a real picture that is happening now. You can see, right? This is what, this is a homeless beggar. She's asking people to uh, spare some change, right? You can see here, the blue tag, 
the blue badge, right? It's what? It's a QR code. So they hold this bowl as a gesture so that people know they are asking you for some ch change to expire. But you see the bowl, it's empty, right? People don't put cash into their bowl because he knows, she, sorry, she knows nobody's carrying any cash on the street anymore in China. So what you're gonna do is put a QR code. So people will scan this QR code and send you cash. And this is exactly what's happening right now. Even if a homeless people asking for change spare, they don't ask you for cash. Even if it's one, one yuan, one, uh, sorry, one pound, two pound, whatever, how small it is, they're asking for a um, QR code. They're asking for a WeChat or Alipay to send them uh, digital money. Okay, so three things has disappeared. And, uh, but we have some new things that introduced by WeChat. The convenience, we don't have to talk about it. And there are one uh, new things that's really interesting. It's the stereotype of Chinese people uh, in the uh, international stage. Because, um, you know, usually uh, when talking about Chinese people, the stereotype is usually like, I know Chinese Kung Fu, like I'm, I'm Jackie Chan or Li Xiaolong, like, oh, something like that. But nowadays, <laughs> since WeChat has this feature that if I want to, I want to add you as in contact, I should either scan your WeChat QR code or I can share, I can show you my WeChat QR code that you can scan me. So nowadays when Chinese people meet each other, they, the, the thing that they say to each other uh, to add WeChat is that, do I scan you or you scan me? <laughs> and yes, that becomes the new stereotype of Chinese people in the international stage. I have literally seen a, a Japanese TV show that show this, oh, you do this, I scan you or you scan me. You must be Chinese. <laughs> That's exactly what's happening right now, first of all. And second of all, WeChat introduced something called mini program. And um, mini program is actually part of the WeChat ecosystem that is, is crucial, crucial, most important to um, startup, foreigner startups in China. Because I, I can say that foreigner startups in China, um, you guys should not do app like you can you cannot develop an app anymore because uh, maybe a little bit technical involved because when you're doing apps develop an apps you have to do an android version uh, a, 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 a iphone version right and sometimes even a web version right but now wechat has released their mini program it's supposed to replace the apple app store and all android store um the mini program is a program that embedded some apps into WeChat so that you can see uh, your friends are using it or people nearby who are using it. So embedded this social connection into this um, mini program. Um, so let's just take an example. What is a mini program? It's like uh, you can uh, use a uh, Chinese version of Twitter. It's called a Weibo. It's Chinese version of Twitter, uh, you can use it as a mini program in WeChat. And um, you can book your uh, train ticket, air tickets in a mini program in WeChat. Um, you can asking people to take care of your pets in a mini program in WeChat. So it, it's literally a, a app store um, marketplace, uh, try to replace uh, uh, Apple iOS um, app store. And um, what we are doing this morning, what I'm doing this morning, I want to find a office to work there what I'm going to do is that, you know, I work at WeWork. Uh, I usually use WeWork's office to work, right? So what I'm going to do there is just scan the QR code at the door of WeWork in my WeChat. So it will time me. It will record the time that I enter. Then I click a button in the WeChat. The door will open automatically. No person is involved. They don't need any staff there. And when I go out, I need to rescan the QR code then they know how much, how many, how many minutes that I spent in this office. Uh, so they charge me. Since it's connected to my bank account, they just charge me automatically. I don't even to enter my password because they have this uh, uh, contact, a contract signed with uh, WeWork. WeWork signed this contract with WeChat. Uh, WeChat. So yeah, uh, this is how uh, life is become now in China 
um, thanks to WeChat, thanks to Tencent, this app, it has many other downside. Um, uh, if you guys are interested, I I can talk a lot about it. Like WeChat are surveillance, right? So yeah, I'm not going to talk too much too much about it. But um, if you're curious, the whole um, startup ecosystem has been changed. Uh, if you are a foreigner startup, you want to enter Chinese market, you definitely don't develop apps because that's uh, definitely cost you more. And no people will install apps because they won't bother. They're just uh, using mini apps in WeChat. So, okay, I think uh, my speech and sharing time is almost done and I'm opening for questions. And let me check. There are uh, quite a few yeah. questions coming up, Vincent. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mike asked if WeChat has dominated, why there are still other social media sites such as Weibo and Renren? Are they still popular? Okay, uh, that's very interesting. Uh, first of all, Renren is dying. I like nobody using Renren. Um, not nobody, but like very, very few. Very, very few people are using Renren right now. They're dying. You can check that. And Weibo, um, they still have many users, but Weibo is more like a open ecosystem because on Weibo, Weibo is like Chinese version of Twitter. Um, because on uh, that Twitter, you know, Twitter is more like a open system. It's a comparison of uh, Twitter to WhatsApp. Because for WhatsApp, you need someone who you know uh, that you can talk to them. You can share your photos with them, right? But for Twitter, uh, all the world can see you. So they serve at different um, means uh, for different purpose. Uh, for Weibo, the Chinese version of Twitter, um, they still got some user and they are still upgrading their system. But uh, in Chinese social media, uh, the, the social platform, uh, WeChat is uh, dominating. There's no even one compete, competitor can compete with WeChat. Um, the only one can be said is QQ. It's a copy of OICQ uh, in Israel, like 20 some years ago, but mm. it's all owned by the same company. WeChat yeah. and QQ are own, all owned by the same company. Okay, yes. Mm. How right. will foreigners do if WeChat Cash is not available to them? What, what should they do if they can't use WeChat wallet or WeChat payment? Okay. Um, yeah, uh, there are instructions like for foreigners only. It be translated to um, a lot of uh, language, uh, German, uh, Japanese and English that they introduce you how to open up your WeChat wallet with your overseas bank account. So you can open WeChat account using your overseas bank account. So surviving China uh, 101, when you land in China, uh, buy, an SF, uh, buy a SIM card and open up your WeChat account, then uh, yeah, you're all settled. And they, they have instructions. Uh, you can read articles like how to set up with your overseas bank account. And if you cannot use WeChat, I heard that Alipay is more, um, Alipay is an, another version of uh, PayPal in China. Alipay has more um, soft policies for foreigners. So mm -hmm. some of the foreigners that they have bank account that they cannot make WeChat pay work. Um, but some of the foreigners I, I, I heard uh, Alipay works for them. Mm. So. And there's another question mm -hmm. saying, uh, do, do homeless people also use smartphone? Okay, this is a really, really good question. Uh, I think people from the UK, you definitely know Huawei, right? I think they're the sponsor of Liverpool. Uh, maybe. Uh, yeah, the, 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 football, the football team is sponsor of Liverpool or whatever. I, I, don't, I don't remember. So uh, uh, thanks to Huawei, and I, I think many people know Xiaomi, right? Xiaomi is another brand of uh, cell phone. And they made the smartphone, brand new smartphone, pretty cheap in China, as cheap as 800 RMB. Um, 800 RMB is like how much pound? 90, 90 some pound? Mm -hmm. 800 RMB, it's like 80 pounds. 80 pounds, okay. So yeah, they make smartphone, a pretty nice smartphone. They can play, even you can play games and uh, you can use uh, very fancy cameras on a smartphone, uh, this Xiaomi um, for 80 pounds. And, uh, why smart people, uh, sorry, why homeless people, smart people, why homeless people uh, is also using smartphone uh, is on, it's because 
that's the only one phone, one type of phone left in China right now. Because, uh, you know, the Nokia phone and uh, the other old cell phone, uh, they, uh, they are gone. Like um, the, the, the store, they don't sell them. So they cannot find it. So, yeah, that's why. So you can, uh, that's Xiaomi uh, for 80 pounds. You can even find some like 40, 50 pounds of smartphones in China in a store or all, all, all over China, everywhere. So basically it's cheap, you say. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. For that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right? and Andrea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yes. There. There are. There are. Mm. And uh, there are quite a lot, yeah, actually. But yeah. Yeah. And, uh, mm. I, I. I will. I will be put into a police station if. Uh, if I'm talking too much. So. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah thank you for your understanding. Yeah. So right. thank you very much, Vincent. Uh, I just want to share like things, the tech. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. It's a great update uh, about the tech and digital world in China. Just to give you one interesting fact this year, uh, I've got friends who sent me WeChat wallet, but uh, WeChat developed another feature. So I had to answer 10 quiz questions about my friend, like what's her favorite movie? What does she do? Uh, which book she read. And if I get 60% of the question right about my friend, I'm entitled to receive her red pocket money for Chinese New Year. So they're constantly making it in a way more fun. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, it's a very innovative company. Uh, great. So um, thank you very much, Boy, to show us an overseas more fun or data get. Oh, Karen, you've got a good point. Maybe data gathering. <laughs> so in the future, maybe we try to develop an encyclopedia about 1.2 billion users. It's going to be a huge database. Very, very good point. Um, so uh, thank you for giving us two different perspectives. Uh, Vincent, one more question for you, actually. Well, I'm curious, how did you spend your Chinese New Year? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, uh, since I call myself an entrepreneur, you know, so most of the time of the year, I spend my time with my only lover work. So, uh, yeah, yeah, so I'm now using the Chinese New Year, um, spend time with my families, like my boys spending two days, two whole days with me. Oh, no, actually not two days, two whole days. But um, yeah, he's very happy. Um, so yeah, uh, usually people spend time with families in Chinese New Year, and there's a rule about it. There's a rule about it, like uh, you know, Chinese New Year. It's actually not one day, right? It's actually one, two, three, four. Uh, at least four days, right? You have the thirties, then Chinese New Year's Eve, and the first, and the second, and the third, right? These four days. So usually, uh, people spend the thirties, the Chinese New Year's Eve, with their family like a direct family. If you are married, you use the first date to go to the man's, the husband's, uh, to visit husband's parents. You use the second day to visit the uh, wife's parents. Um, it's a rule, but nowadays the rule is just fading. Um, not too many people are following that. But mm -hmm. still, the overall rule is that you spend time with the family. Yeah, uh, I'm very glad to hear as a very busy uh, entrepreneur uh, in a constantly rapidly changing society, you were able to enjoy a couple of days uh, for some quality time with your boy. That's really precious. I am now, I need to find Judy. I am going to spotlight Judy. Hi, Judy, you need to unmute yourself, Judy. Thank you. Great. Hello, everybody. Yes. Hi, Hello. Well? Yes. Hi. Hi. We can hear you really, really well. Great. So uh, right now, I'm in my parents' place. I'm used to their place. So I would like also ask my parents say hi to everybody. <laughs> so. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year, 
Wait, so uh, yeah, I haven't spent the Chinese New Year at home uh, for 10 years. So uh, that's a very special family time for me. I, I'm so happy. Hey, by the way, can, let me move the camera a little bit. Can everyone see my Gu Zheng? Yes, we can. Okay. Can everyone see me? Yes, we can. Sounds is good. Sound is very good. Perfect. So, uh, so by the way, did everyone hear about uh, Gu Zheng before this Chinese instrument? Mm. I cannot say anybody, so I only can see three person here. Minji, Bao, and Tobin said so. So many people said not so much. Gong si, Gong no, said not so much. Not so much. I see. So Gu Zheng is a Chinese traditional musical instrument, uh, which was invented like in Qing dynasty. So it has more than 2000 years history. So, and, and also Gu Zheng is a very important part in the Chinese tea ceremony. Uh, so today the music I'm gonna play is called Yu Zhou Chang Wan. It talks about um, few uh, the fishermen were relaxing and singing to each other um, they're in their boat on a very quiet lake and they just uh, enjoy their time. So this is a story, uh, this music gonna talk about. So uh, enjoy what you ever have right now. You can enjoy a cup of tea or a cup of wine. Just uh, listen to the heavenly sounds. Okay.
this is so beautiful, Judy. It, it really, I was, holding, I was holding my breath because I didn't want to breathe when you were playing the music. Judy, I want to ask you a few questions for people to get to know you and your story. Uh, how did you learn Gu Zhen? Like, why did you learn Gu Zhen? I love Chinese uh, traditional, uh, like culture. So Gu Zheng is a very important part of it. So I picked Gu Zheng as my uh, instrument. And also I think I had a great tutor is very important. So I like my tutor a lot. Like the, I kind of fall in love, but not like a romantic love with my tutor. So uh, I learned a lot from her. And when she teach me like each song, she talk about the, gave me the introduction about the story behind each of the song. So it's beautiful. All the music uh, I play on Gu Zheng, it talk about a beautiful story behind it. So it's beautiful. And we also know you are the second generation of Chinese tea master family. And uh, you, you have a very interesting idea. You host an uh, Airbnb online experience, which I attended and uh, it's just wonderful. Uh, but you are not taking any of the money income. You will donate all the income for your love for the earth. Can you tell us more about your project? Thank you for uh, asking me. So uh, since the pandemic start, uh, I've been thinking about what I can do to bring the positive vibes to everyone and what I can do to contribute to the global, uh, like a environmental sustainability. So start from that moment, I figured out a solution is yes, I can do a one hour for earth project which means like I use one hour of my day to host the one hour Airbnb online experience to uh, share everyone about the, the story, the secrets of the tea and the tea uh, ceremony to help everyone to be, become more healthy and to become more happy. And uh, all the income from there, I'm gonna donate you to my another project called a tree planning project. So I set up some goal, you know, as a business woman, I will always set up goals. So I set up some goal, like I want to enrich 1,500 people's life by my 30 years old birthday. And uh, I want to uh, plant in 30,000 trees globally, like a 5,000 in each continent, like uh, also by my uh, year, like a 30 years old birthday. So that's the story behind it. <laughs> yes. And we, I'm also so glad that you are on your way to London to set up your brand for tea uh, and you brand for for tea to make tea fashionable again i i'm so excited so much forward to looking way, to meet you by the way Minty, i want to add one more thing it's like the inspiration behind it why why i started the um, one hour for uh, earth this project because the other herban you know her there's one quote from her she said when you turn older uh, when you turn old you realize you have two hands one hand is help yourself another hand is helping others so i got a very uh like a motivated and inspired from that sentence that's another reason i started this person one hour for us great thank you yes uh thank you so much judy for the beautiful music and your beautiful project uh as a way to complete our like session to celebrate chinese new year i have two announcements to make before we go uh, one is for our uh, culture story session event. We've been doing it for 10 months as a consequence uh, of due to the pandemic, we couldn't travel physically. So we started to travel on Zoom. Um, we received um, so far uh, 700 pounds donation from everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, so I'm building a website. Also, I'm looking for um, one or two volunteers to help us to grow. Uh, in social media area. So if you want to practice your skill in social media, please contact me and email me. Uh, next week, uh, we will have a session to talk about the architecture skyscrapers in London, uh, not only for its aesthetic meaning, but also uh, how we think about ethics and history and the philosophy when it comes to architecture for the Next few months, we will cover a wide range of subjects in science, history, food, culture, architecture. So, uh, and there are some very special guests uh, we are in discussion with. Hopefully, we can invite uh, some really inspiring people. Um, and 
And if you can help to share these events with your family and friends, it will help us to increase attendance number and further improve our talk quality and speaker quality. So uh, for that, thank you very much. Uh, again, our uh, big applause to Boy, Judy and Vincent and everybody happy new year. See you next week. Bye. Thank you so much, Minji. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.